Hello guys, welcome to Titanfall 2. This is my first game in Titanfall 2, this is the last beta that just happened, and I was trying to get a grasp of the graphic code, didn't play the first beta, and so this is my very first match of Titanfall 2. In this video, I want to talk about um, the opinion of Titanfall 2 as it is right now. There are a lot of videos right now hating on it, talking about how it's like crap, how it sucks, how it disappointed them. I think about 60% of that is just the piggyback from the failure of Titanfall 1. People are saying that just because it's very popular to do so, it you know gets views. If you say Titanfall 2 is going to be crap, you know that's like the um, most egregious, most out there statement you can make. Which I suppose it's a little understandable from seeing Titanfall 1. And uh, there's a few different things I want to be able to talk about. First thing is the success plan for Titanfall 2. This is the most important thing for it. The player base is everything, as it is in most games and specifically the player base of the release. There's a quote from Reddit that I want to be able to bring into this discussion, and um, this is from the original poster. This is, we see why Titanfall is in the poor state it is on PC, and we always end up with the agreement that the root of the problem is a low number of players. This is speaking about the PC version of the game. I played personally on the Xbox One at the time because my PC couldn't handle it, and so um, a lot of the things are very similar between the two different you know, versions for the PC and the Xbox One. The OP continued to say their player base was doomed from the beginning because the game was unfinished. Take that phrase, put it on a plaque, give it to Respawn Entertainment. This is the reason why Titanfall 1 failed. The player base was doomed from the beginning because the game was unfinished. That is the exact reason why it failed. The game released because at the time the PC version came out with the Xbox One version, it had to catch up basically, and it just wasn't ready at the time. So the video game was not released, finished, it was released in an unfinished state and they had to continue patching it. Um, and we're seeing this a lot more commonly like day one patches, just to try to get the video game out there, get the people who paid uh, copious amounts of money in the pre-order sales for example, to actually get the game that they wanted but it's not ready yet, it's not finished. The OP continued to say, The game sold about 300,000 copies despite only being available on Origin, which by itself is fantastic for the game. You know, It was not sold on Steam for PC, it was sold on Origin, which is crazy it even got 300,000 views, honestly. If even 1% of those players had been retained as regulars, which might add only 3,000, the player base would be enlarged enough to mitigate most of the usual complaints. I think this is true. I agree with the poster in this Reddit post and what they're talking about. It's a fairly logical argument and that's the player base, it, was, it wasn't was sold on Steam. Like that was also a big issue with the game is that it was not sold on Steam. But people joined the game and then quit because it just wasn't what they expected. And that brings me to my first points of this three point video. The hype train utterly crashed because people did not want to play an unfinished product. Can you really unblame them though? Um, in my experience with the Xbox One version, I played a bunch of it. There was, I think, nine different total procedures you could have in the game, and I got up to seven. And I saw the game continue from its very beginning when a lot of people were playing, and then kind of die down and die down. People just, it wasn't really ready. For example, there was a feature that came in about a few months afterwards, so it was called Frontier Defense. This is a feature that was supposed to be on release. Like it wasn't supposed to be waiting until you know four patches in to be able to put that into the game. There were a lot of server issues. Those issues you couldn't actually join friends. The game just wasn't ready. Um, and again, a big problem with it is that it did not sell on Steam. It sold on Origin, which is still three hundred thousand amazing for Origin. The next thing I want to bring up is that the game was sold at a high price for low content. People were basically charged $60 for exclusive beta, again, because it just wasn't ready. And also, uh, people expected things like, I don't know, a campaign. People expected a campaign for $60 videos, so people in their mindsets, when they think of um, the most you know relevant competitor, which is Call of Duty, they think of a campaign, they think of the game itself, which is a multiplayer, and something additional, which in Call of Duty's case is usually zombies or something like that, something you know, like zombies. That's what they see when they think of $60 for a game, that's what they see. And that is reasonable for the consumer. 
So when Titanfall had $60 for this game, which was an exclusive beta again, and it didn't live up to the expectations, and it didn't have campaign, and it didn't have all these things that they wanted, they were upset. You know, they just spent $60 on this game, and you know, for what? It was just a multiplayer that wasn't even that inventive. Um, I'm speaking fairly critically of the game, but I feel like I'm speaking honestly about what the game was when it released. I really did like playing it, um, and so I think I will still get Titanfall 2. And there's a few other points I want to make. The third point in my, you know, three-point bulletin is that people quit before the problems were fixed, causing problems for the others who stayed. So I would have these issues about six months into the game whenever people would start quitting my lobby. And that's normal in you know, multiplayer games that happens all the time, Call of Duty, and just do people come in. Uh, this game example, the, <laughs> the game I'm playing right now, it was actually a game that I joined in mid-match. So that's not something that's going to be surprising, but... There were not enough people to supply the servers to replace the people who quit. There just weren't enough people. So you would have in a 5v5 game, which is pretty low in a multiplayer game in general, and Titanfall tried to make that work with like grunts and stuff like that, and they're going to do it again in Titanfall 2, it wouldn't work because there would only be, you know, three people in an entire match. Out of, you know, it was supposed to be ten. That's, you can't have that in a game and have it still be a success. It just... At that point, in my opinion, that's when it died, and that's why I stopped playing. It's because it wasn't fun anymore, even for what it was. In Frontier Defense, I played it a little bit, but it's just, it just wasn't the same, and it wasn't the game that I bought. I didn't feel that I got the value out of the game that I bought, which is thankful. So, how are these things going to be fixed? Again, the three main points. First point, the hype train utterly crashed because people didn't want to play an unfinished product. Second point, Titanfall was sold at the full price for half of a video game. And the third point is people quit before the problems were fixed, causing problems for the others who stayed. So how is this going to be fixed? Well, make a game that isn't shit on release. There you go. Novel idea. Second thing is make content worthwhile for $60 or charge less $60 for the product that it is. Um, Rainbow Six Siege, and I'm going to go a little bit over the, you know, the gameplay here, so you see a little bit over this. Rainbow Six Siege is definitely the one video game that I think of when I think of that statement. So, people wouldn't want to play Rainbow Six Siege for sixty dollars. You weren't going to pay sixty dollars for it. There are a lot of people that are like that. But let's say for you know fifteen dollars, yeah, I'd buy that. Rainbow Six Siege came out with this deal recently, which they charged the game for fifteen dollars. But it's not as much content. You don't get all the operators. You have to grind for more things, or you can pay with microtransactions to buy the ones you wanted, the operators you wanted. I feel like Titanfall should use this in the next game, so Titanfall 2, because if they don't, people are going to spend sixty dollars for a multiplayer-only game, which there is going to be your campaign. Um, but again, like campaigns are not as successful as in multiplayer games like this. Um, for example, Call of Duty Advanced Warfare, only about 8% of the population actually played the campaign and finished it. 8%! And they hired a lot of good people for that game, like Kevin Spacey for example. And there's just, like so many other people that they hired for the game and so much money went into building the campaign. For what? For what benefit? So that's why that Titanfall went away from it in Titanfall 1. Building the campaign for it, building some lore, having some super fans that are really passionate about the lore. That's going to be very good for the game, and it's going to leave people in the player base. Um, another thing they're going to do is the Microsoft Play Anywhere feature. I believe it's called Play Anywhere. It's the idea that if you buy it on the Xbox One, you can play it on the PC, and vice versa. That if you buy it on the PC, you can play it on the Xbox One without having to pay for it again. You can just download it on both systems, which is a great 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 idea I cannot state how important that's going to be and um, if they also sell the game on PC on Steam that's be really good it's be given to a lot more people who would uh, not want to create an origin account to buy the game you know almost every PC gamer has a Steam account it's just the universal PC marketplace and so if you give the game access to as many people as possible it's more likely that they're going to do that um, Combining the console and PC servers to artificially preserve the player base as well. Rocket League has done this. I think it's a really good thing as well. Whenever the game starts getting lower in population, if you have the console and PC servers together, it's a lot more people playing 
the game on the servers than if not. You wouldn't have the issue of only having three people in a 10 person game. Because between the PC version and the Xbox version, you would have people fill in those slots. Like, for example, pilots versus pilots, which is the least like common um, game mode in Titanfall 1. You would actually have people to play that if you wanted, because they would have both servers ready. And lastly, do not rush the release and do not release an unfinished game. Alright guys, this has been a look into Titanfall 2 and whether it's going to be successful or not. My personal predictions, I think it's going to be more successful than Titanfall 1. It's not going to be you know, blowing out the water, it's not going to be breaking the records by any means. But because of the campaign, because of the different things it's going to do, it's going to create a player base of people who are super fans about Titanfall. That are going to love it, that are going to stay in the game, and that is going to be relevant in a year from now. If you enjoyed the video, let me know. If you uh, disagree with some of the ideas I had, feel free to go in the comment section. I'll love to discuss some of the ideas about Titanfall, and I could be completely wrong. I could be, you know, two weeks in, complete flop. Who knows? So, I think I'll be getting the game about a week after release. I just want to see how it's going to play out first. I'm not going to pre-order any crap like that. So, if you enjoyed the video, let me know. And as always, guys. Stay classy out there.